Hey guys, you're from Trying Fly Fishing, and today we're going to be tying another steelhead fly. This is the Metal Detector 2.0. It's, well, it could be a number of different things. It could be a winter steelhead fly, it could be a summer or spring steelhead fly. Um, it, it's very much more of a pattern than a specific fly. Uh, we're going to tie this one today in a sculpin color, unweighted. We're going to get started on it right now. So in the vise today, I just have a shank here, um, cut to length, whatever length you like. This is about, oh, an inch and a quarter, maybe a little longer. And I'm going to be tying this, like I said, in the sculpin color. So very olive with a little bit black mixed in. Uh, these fish well when they're two-tone. Think uh, black and purple, pink and purple, pink and chartreuse, stuff like that. And again, uh, black and olive. So the first thing I'm going to do is start some UTC 140 in ultra or in olive on this. So I like to start it right here, bring it back. We're just going to cover this shank. We'll probably cover it up and down just because we're going to tie some wire on this. And I like to have a nice thread base for my wire. So nothing moves around. And then I, I mean, I'm not going to glue my wire, but if you did, uh, this thread base is going to allow that glue to stick. So let's get rid of our little tag. Oops, it's not going to break. Okay, no. So I have a Senyo's intruder trailer wire in a large. Uh, just pick the size of the wire that matches your hook size. So I'm just going to get it, double it over here, take a measurement of where I want my hook and how long it is. It's going to be right about here. So I'm just going to grab this, uh, throw a pinch wrap on here. And it's a little hard uh, in this vise to show you, but it is going to lay straight. So just work our way up here, keeping this on top of the hook shank for the most part. And we're going to go right to this break here, right where the wire doubles over or the shank doubles over. We're going to pull our wire back, grab that, tighten it down. Let's check our length here. A little long. So I want this to come back most of the way, but I don't want it to interfere with my loop. Let's tie that down nice and tight, and then we'll pull the other side back. And then check the length on that again, a little long. So just have a little pair of dikes here, and I can just find the sharp part and cut those off. So let's make sure our wire is in right on top and it is. So we're good to bring this back and tighten this down. And again, I want to kind of keep these on top of the shank as much as I can. Make sure my wire is still on top of the shank. I need to get rotated. Nope, we're good to go. I'm going to tuck that wire down so it's out of my way. Get this back. There's the hole. Okie doke. So for a tail on this, we can do a number of different things. Um, I'm going to use bucktail today, and I have olive bucktail mixed with a little bit of tan. Uh, it's going to give me a good little look, the look I'm looking for. You can use craft fur. You could use uh, fox, arctic fox. You could use fin raccoon is popular on these. But like I said, I like this bucktail. It gives me a good tapered look, natural material. It moves well, breathes well. And I like to blend the colors. So it gives me that opportunity to blend two different colors here. So I have my naturally tapered bucktail loosely stacked. I'm going to take a measurement and, you know, where my hook is going to be, I want it to cover that. So it's about right there. Um, we can take measurement here. Again, it's just longer than the length of the shank. So I'm going to tie this in right on top. Gather that. And then I'm going to work this up and try and keep it on top here. It doesn't really matter, honestly, but for simplicity's sake and to keep this clean, we'll keep it right on top. Gathering that up. And then, and again, I'm gonna bring this 
right to where this shank doubles back. And I'm going to get rid of my butts. I'm just going to cover up these butts here. And transition down. Uh, good enough for me. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in some UV polar chenille and have it in UV white. Now you could probably use an olive color too, but I like this UV white because it's going to be like a sculpt and belly. And that's kind of the color combo we're going for today. And again, you can tie this in a number of ways. And a good way to vary it, we're going to tie it off right about there, so we'll leave our thread there. A good way to vary it up is to vary the density of this polar chenille. So we're just going to wrap it, get it going, and then we're going to pull it back as we go. So I don't want it too, too dense today. So I'm just going to take open spiral wraps that are almost touching, pulling that chenille back as I go. And just creating a nice underbody. This UV polar chenille is not as dense as some other similar materials. So if you wanted a denser fly, you could change it up. All right, and I'm just gonna tie that off right there. And then get rid of my tag. Cool, make sure that's covered up, all tied down. The next material I'm gonna tie in is a EP sparkle brush. And this is in the root beer color. So I'm gonna use this end, it's a brand new one with a good bit of wire. So we're just gonna tie this in. And then while we have this extra wire, let's just double it back. Make sure it's super, super secure for no reason other than I want to. Yoki doke. So we're gonna take four to five wraps here. Again, density is up to you, but I want this to move some water. Like I said, this is going to be a sculpin high water spring fly. Three, four, five. Let's do one more. Well, a half one. That looks pretty good to me. I'm just going to split this. Come in here and try not to trap too many materials. Not that it matters. And we'll just come in here with our dikes again. I've dulled these up quite a bit. There it is. Let's pull this material back, kind of cover up anything that's errant, brush it out a little bit with our fingers, make sure it is what we want and is not trapped. You can already see we're creating that nice taper here. So the final material we're going to throw in on this is just going to be some black marabou. I have a blood quill and I'm going to tie it in by the tip. So what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the tip, stroking the fibers back so I can get good access to just a plain stem here. Okay, so I just have a little tie-in point here for my marabou. And then I'm gonna fold it back. Uh, because we're tying this in by the tip, uh, there's a good chance we'll break it. So you just wanna be careful. So as I wrap this forward, I'm gonna fold the fibers back. Um, you can use water, saliva, or really sweaty hands like I have, oops, to make sure these are kind of playing nice and laying back. This one's not cooperating that well. Uh, you may find this is easier if you use hackle pliers, but right now I'm anti-hackle plier. Let's see what we've got here. Let's take another wrap. Just one more, and I think we'll have the correct density. Okay, and again, I'm just coming in here and kind of splitting this and trying to find the stem, just like I did with that brush. So let's go in there. One, two, and we did trap some, but we'll fix it in a second. So let's stroke everything back, kind of make a little bit of a dam here to make sure those fibers are back and we'll create a nice little head. But again, you can weight these. You can weight it with dumbbell eyes, cones, a bead. 
I just prefer an unweighted fly right now. So let's whip finish. We got good spacing on that head. It looks clean. We'll throw some glue over the top and we'll be done. So guys, that's the Metal Detector 2.0. Uh, pretty simple, easy steelhead fly. Um, can be varied up quite a bit. Like I said, I've tied this light and then a sculpin color. And I'm very happy with how this is fishing. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.